Hi, it's Katrina Kavanagh here, and I'm the Chief Empathy Officer of Kindness on Purpose. Last week at St Helens Park Public School, there was there was a fire, and several of the kindy and year one classrooms were destroyed in that fire. We're now a week on, and what I know about trauma is that um, the first days and week um, are where we are all in a state of shock. Now, once that shock has passed, we move into the next stage of recovery, and that's where we are now. So I wanted to make this video for the parents, for the carers, for the teachers, and for the students to help you navigate your way through this next section when you know the shock has passed. The first thing, I've made some notes, I'll be referring. So the first thing is, um, once the shock has passed, it's, I want you to know what to expect. So in the work that's been done last week has been fantastic. We've established safety or we've re-established safety. Children have been moved to new classrooms so they have physical safety. They can look around and see that there's no fire directly around them so they know they're physically safe. They've been told really clearly all the information that they possibly can be told. So again, that helps them, informing them as to what's happened. That helps them feel a sense of safety because they know what's going on, okay? Now that's been beautiful. Then we've moved into re-establishing routines, getting back into class lessons, and then just getting through each day as they would normally in a school day. So it's been very good. We're now though in the second week. So let's talk about what can we, we can expect for ourselves as adults, the grown-ups in the situation, and then also the children. As grown-ups, um, and, and both can, the ideas I share with you, the possible symptoms you might be experiencing, really go across both um, adults and children. I would expect that for now, uh, many adults are feeling more tired than they would, than they normally do. Um, you might be thinking, gosh, why am I so tired? It's like, well, that's because you've just been traumatized. You've been through something very significant, you know. Um, so you're going to be feeling more tired. You may even feel, you know, really sore muscles. And, you know, I had a really sad experience last week with one of my daughters who was exposed to that horrible video that's around. And, you know, she came at the end of the week and said, Mum, I've got such sore muscles. And I said, yes, well, of course, of course you do. Because what happens is anything that impacts on our brain and our mental well-being absolutely impacts on our physical body. So that's why when I work with schools, I work a lot with the physical body. So you're going to have muscle soreness. You're going to be tired. You're going to be feeling perhaps even more irritated. You might notice that you're a bit short-tempered. You might feel sadder than you normally do. You might find yourself gravitating towards, you know, news stories that are, you know, really negative and heavy. Um, or you may also notice other people talking about their life and, and you might think, gosh, it's so, you know, people just don't understand what really goes on and you just might be thinking, gosh, people are superficial or I wish that's all I had to worry about. You know, so if those things are happening, then please, please understand that this is what we would expect. Your body is literally talking to you through muscle soreness and fatigue, letting you know that you're tired, you've been through something, okay? With our children, how that, what that looks like is because kids always express their distress through their bodies and their behavior. So you might have kids coming and saying, they've got sore tummies, they've got headaches. Of course, go and get that checked out by the doctors, of course. But know that that may also be due to their body feeling the physical effects of the stress having gone through the fire last week, okay? Um, we, we also might see um, an increase in whatever their normal behaviour is. So if they're quieter kind of kids, they might even go even quieter. Or if they're kids that normally, you know, they let you know how they're feeling through their behaviour, like they, they might be having more child, you know, more angry outbursts or, or um, more reactive, then you might see even more of that. More fights with siblings. Seemingly, you know, if you find yourself thinking, why are they acting like that? I can ask, I can answer that, and that is probably because of the fire. Okay, so just know anything that you normally experience can be exaggerated, plus we can get those physical um, physical feelings. Children may, will also feel more tired, but they may not have the ability to tell you that. They may just not really know. They just might feel very out of sorts and not themselves. Okay, so once we know what to expect, what I want you to, the next question is, well, what can we do about it? 
okay? And um, before we talk about what we can do about it, the most important thing is for you to take a moment and just, just sit for a second now and maybe reflect after this video and just sort of think, Mm, am I noticing a difference? Some people, you may not notice a difference, and that doesn't mean it's not there though, right? And it just hasn't come emerged yet in through bodies and behavior and symptoms. It may come later because for, the period of shock can be different um, lengths of time for different people, okay? But let's talk about what we can do about it. When I work with um, anything that impacts our brain and body, mental health issues, I treat that as a physical health issue. So if, you're, if your body had just gone through um, an illness, if it had just gone through you know, a, a, um, a sports injury, what you would be doing is you would be using an ice pack, using a heat pack, you'd be treating the muscle stiffness and, and you'd be, you know, you'd be um, if you're tired, you'd be having more rest. You know, you'd be sitting more often and having a cup of tea. You'd be doing all of those kinds of things. You'd be taking it at a slower pace. As a family, you'd be sitting down and saying, gosh, what have we just gone through? Okay. So it's exactly all of that. It's exactly all of that. I want you to treat your body as if it's just gone through a physical illness or a physical event and it needs nurturing and care. The two, the two things I'd like you to try, if you haven't tried this yet, most of you will look at it and go, gosh, Really? We're talking about our feelings. Why is she talking about a cool pack and a heat pack? And, and the more I get into your school and whether we, um, you'll hear me talk more and more, I'll explain why. But it's all to do with the brain and the vagal nerve that works through the body. Um, and so what I would love you to do is I'd love you to use either a heat pack or a cool pack. And um, if some people love the cool more, but if you love the cool pack, pop it on the back of your neck. I would love everyone on a regular basis. I've got families who work with me that are sitting there, the whole family, every night with a cool pack on the back of their neck. And um, they're putting it on there because that, putting a cool pack on the back of your neck, um, if you want to put one on your chest, on your tummy, whatever area works best for you, it's going to really have a direct impact on how you're feeling. It's going to help bring your body, your, your body, get your, bring your body back down to a place of feeling more settled and returning it to how it felt before the fire. So cool pack on the back of the neck, cool pack on the tummy, sorry, tummy and on the chest. If you, are, if you like heat, the ones, the wheat bags that you warm up in the microwave, pop that on your chest, pop that on your tummy. Now you can do that when you're feeling distressed, when you're feeling heavy, or you can do that regularly, even when you think you're okay, okay? For the families and, and, and for the teachers that are recovering from this fire, I would love to hear that every night you're going home and you're sitting there with a cool pack or a heat pack on your body. As you do that, say to yourself, I'm doing this so I can feel okay again. And again, it might all feel a bit silly, but again, there's a neuroscience. There, the, me saying that to you is based on um, the latest understandings from neuroscience. I hope this has been helpful, uh, those ideas. And also, once you've looked after your body, that's when it's really important. You know, kids will come in for more affection. So give that affection. They're going to want to cuddle up more. They may even regress a little bit and want to sleep with you, you know, in your bed if they're out of bed. Some kids, we're still all sleeping with, co-sleeping with our kids. So, you know, it's, it's tr totally up to you. But notice there might be more need for affection and connection. Please give it. It's because they're wanting to come in close and feel that connection. As adults, you might feel a greater need for, you know, connecting to your key support people. It won't be a choice. It'll just be a drive. You'll feel it. Go with that. Reach out. Get cuddles from your significant others. Get cuddles from your um, parents um, and, and, and significant people to you. Even if you're a grown-up, we still need a cuddle, right? Um, and then also, last but certainly not least, um, it's okay to be having those gentle conversations, to be normalizing everyone's feelings. Of course, we're going to be... We, last week, we all experienced a fire, for goodness sake. You know, I think that's really, really important. And to talk to kids about the what they've lost. They no longer have their beautiful artwork that they've created that was displayed in their room. They now have new books. Their old books, you know, it had the history of all the work that they've created. And all of us need to remember, I mean, I remember when my girls were in kindy in year one, every artwork that was brought home was a significant event. So the work they do holds a lot of emotion and has held a lot of, held a lot of their creativity. So it's important to them, okay? Even if you have a child that sort of seemingly doesn't care, 
it's, it's important to them. So have those gentle conversations. Gosh, it's sad, you know. Gosh, it's sad that we don't have, we didn't get to see that artwork. And maybe talk about doing some more artwork, but acknowledge the sadness that they can't bring home that artwork and how you feel sad too as a parent, how you feel sad as a teacher that you won't, won't be able to give that artwork to them to go home, that you'll no longer have it around you. It's important to acknowledge the sadness. Those feelings are okay. All right. I hope that's been helpful and I cannot wait to work with your community as we work together as you become a Kindness on Purpose school. Take care. Bye-bye.